Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 6. We have uh, we are presenting quantum adiabatic theorem and uh, one thing we tried to emphasize here is that when there is a dynamical evolution going on in quantum system just before initiation of the dynamical evolution the system is in a stationary state. It can be in a single state let us say ground state. But after the dynamical evolution is turned off immediately after that point, um, uh, point of time, the system is not in the stationary state, system is in a non-stationary state and that non-stationary state has to be expressed in terms of the linear combination of the stationary states available for the system and that is exactly what we have done here. That's, and th this is general consensus of general way of uh, doing the um, the uh, or uh, calculating uh, the, the quantum uh, the exploding the quantum system in the um, uh, uh, which is uh, using t t TDAC time dependence Orringer equation. So what we are saying is that just before uh, the expansion it was in the stationary state and the stationary states are given by H naught. But after immediately after the expansion, we cannot uh, give more time after the expansion. It is just exactly immediately after the expansion of the box, the particle is in non-stationary state and that non-stationary state which means that I may have population in different states. That is why it is non-stationary. If, uh, if, uh, if it is in the, uh, the population staying in the same state, then it is not non-stationary state anymore. But if the po population are st staying in different states, it means that all states are going to contribute. It is more like a superposition and the moment I have superposition, it is called non-stationary state. So this non-stationary state will be defined as linear combination of all stationary states present at that time, at that LT uh, distance and LT distance which means that HT Hamiltonian will give me that state, stationary states. So those stationary states may be occupied and we need to find out the population of each occupancy uh, of the states. So that is the basic idea uh, which we have to follow and we have clarified that due to this non-adiabatic uh, 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 sorry, this, due to this adiabatic change, due to this temporal change from 0 to t, the total accumulated phase would be this one for each uh, nth state. Each stationary state is accumulating a temporal phase of this kind because E t is changing, E n t is changing. So, instead of uh, writing this expression, uh, this uh, entire thing, we will assume that um, uh, theta n, we will define a quantity called theta n. Theta n is actually minus i by h cut 0 to t e n t dash d t dash. That is the theta n. So, basically this entire integration is theta n. So, we will just replace this by theta n. Okay, I, I does not have that. So, it is theta n is actually 1 by this. So, in that case I will be able to write on I theta n t, a phase factor, total phase factor which is accumulated by the, uh, the nth stationary state at that time 
at LT uh, distance for the LT distance uh, for the LT dimension of the box. Um, each stationary state is accumulating the phase, this is the phase, each stationary state wave function is given by this at that time and its contribution to the total uh, wave function which is a non-stationary state. So, what we need to do now as usual uh, for uh, any uh, Schrodinger's uh, way of solving the problem, we have to uh, insert this one to TDAC to get this unknown CN part to find out what is the population each state contributing, how much each state is contributing to the, uh, uh, the non-stationary state of the particle. So, that is exactly what we are going to do right now. Uh, for the subsequent mathematical derivation further we will write down few things, we will write down that as a result of slow temporal variation of the Hamiltonian this at time t which is immediately after the process is turned off this eigenvalue equation is valid psi n t this eigenvalue equation is valid and um, this is this is one thing which we have already said that um, before the expansion the eigenvalue uh, the, 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 the equation was h0 psi 0 equals e n 0 psi n 0 and after the expansion I have now this is t this is instead of 0, I have now t, instead of 0, I have now t, instead of 0, I have now t and instead of 0, I have now t immediately after the expansion is turned off. So, this part is valid and when this is valid, then we assume that uh, at time t which is L t is the distance. Uh, the, the dimension of the box. For this dimension of the box, the all this psi n which we have written, it is it is it is actually the states here, not states here. These are not the these states are uh, given by H naught, but these states, stationary states, are given by H t. That is the Hamiltonian at time t. So, those states are orthonormal to each other. So, I can write down that psi m t we will use Dirac notation n t equals delta m n which is nothing but 1 when m equals n and it is going to be 0 when m not equals n. So, they remain. So, those states are remain orthonormal um, at any uh, at that time. So, at time t immediately after the process has been turned off those stationary states remain orthonormal. So, these are the uh, uh, facts we have considered to solve this problem and now all we need to do is that this is the answer which is a trial wave function we have to insert to this TDAC and get the solution, solution which means that we will be looking for what the expression we have for C n. C n will give me the population of each state, each um, available state. So, let us look at the derivation, we will first insert this to the right hand side, so sorry left hand side. So, left hand side for left hand side what I get is that I h cut partial derivative with respect to t psi t equals i h cut now summation over n this is d c n t this is not a partial derivative anymore because c n depends on only on time. But this is partial derivative because although explicitly we are not showing it x depends on the variable x uh, sorry the psi depends on variable x. So, it should be written like this way psi x 
l t instead of writing like this way we are just writing psi t ok. So, we should not get confused what is the notation what does it mean by this notation and that is why we are using the partial derivative here, but c t depends on time. So, that is why this is total derivative we are considering here. Now, this is psi n t e to the power i theta n t plus plus summation of c n t partial derivative psi n t e to the power i theta n t plus summation of c n t psi n t then i theta n t e to the power i theta n t. Now, this is going to be also the uh, not going to be the partial derivative is going to be total derivative because theta n depends on the energy and energy depends on does not depend on x energy depends on only l t. So, that is why this is uh, this is going to be total uh, total derivative. So, this 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 is what I get. So, if I simplify little bit further I will get summation of d c n t d t psi n t e to the power i theta n t plus i h cut c n t partial derivative of the wave function e to the power i theta n t plus now what I have is that the I have i here and I have i here. So, what I will have is summation of c n t psi n t then minus h cut it will become minus h cut because of the i multiplied by i then the derivative of this theta into this phase part multiplied by e to the power i theta n t. So, this is the left hand side right hand side one can insert here right hand side right hand side is going to be h t psi t which is nothing but h t summation of c n t psi n t e to the power i theta n t equals h t now h t acting on psi n t we have shown we have previously said that h t acting on psi n t will give me e n t psi n t that is the time independence Schrodinger equation the eigenvalue equation at time t which is immediately after the adiabatic process is turned off this eigenvalue equation holds that is why we get the different eigenstates at that time. And uh, so, so I can write down this is nothing but uh, following this is nothing but uh, c n t then e n t psi n t e to the power i theta n t. Okay. Now, because this theta n t is nothing but minus 1 by h cut 0 to t e n t dash d t dash, one can write down that d theta n t d t is 1 by h cut e n t one can write down this. So, basically integration is now converted to its derivative form 
from this derivative form only we get this integration. So, we are getting the derivative form. Once we get this derivative form, one can write down this E n t is nothing but minus h cut derivative of theta n t with respect to time. So, this can be inserted here we have E n t this can be inserted here and what I get is that the right hand side finally transform to C n t then minus h cut d theta n t d t psi n t e to the power i theta n t that is what I get from right hand side because it is TDAC left hand side and right hand side should be equal. So, this part and this part should be equal and if we make it equal what we see here is that this part and this part will be cancelling each other and in the end what I get is I I get I h cut summation of d c n t d t psi n t e to the power i theta n t equals minus of I h cut summation of c n t psi n t e to the power i theta n t this is what I get i and i h cut i h, I h cut will cancel out. So, finally I get uh, after inserting that trial wave function which is also called unsurge that uh, we, we get this expression and we have to further reduce it and uh, the we will be able to reduce it further by multiplying uh, the entire expression uh, multiplying the entire expression by psi. So, we will will multiply by psi star m t and make use of not orthonormalization condition. So, I will I will multiply this one by psi m t. So, I will I'll just rewrite this one as follows. I will write down as and then integrate it over the spatial coordinate which is psi m t then this is going to be psi n t integration then I have this factor i theta n t equals here also I will do the same thing I will multiply from the left hand side by this psi m and then integrate it over the spatial coordinate e to the power i theta n t. So, this is what I get to reduce it by multiplying by this complex conjugate of the psi m because we are going to make use of uh, uh, the orthonormal condition. Orthonormal condition we have seen it is this this is this this is the orthonormal condition this is becoming uh, 0 when m not equals n and this is becoming 1 when m equals n. So, we will make use of this and this is a trick which we use many occasions to reduce TDAC. So, uh, this is a very common trick. So, so, this expression this final expression will reduce down every other terms will be 0 because of this term except for when n equals m. So, I get only this term surviving dt e to the power i theta m t. This term will be surviving. On the other hand, right hand side I cannot do anything because this is with respect to derivative. I do not have any trick for the derivative yet. So, I have to keep it as it is minus n c n t psi m. e to the power i theta n t and uh, what we will do we will just take this one 
on the right hand side and finally we will be able to write down dcm dt equals minus cnt summation uh, this is integration this is bracket notation dt e to the power now i then this is going to be theta n t minus theta m t that is the uh, final expression we get. So, so, in order to reduce this expression what we need to do we need to find out this expression. If we get this expression because theta m theta n is has already an expression theta n we, we have seen theta n t is nothing but um, minus 1 by h cut 0 to t e n t dash d t dash. This is the integration represented by theta n. So, this part is known the c uh, the, 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 this part if we if we get an expression we will be able to uh, reduce the uh, expression further. That is exactly what we will do. Uh, we have now this expression already given and uh, we need to know this one. So, in order to get this one what we will do? Uh, we will first take the time derivative of this expression, time derivative of this expression this is the um, eigenvalue equation at time t immediately after the um, adiabatic process is turned off. So, we will take the first derivative with respect to time we get h t psi n t equals with respect to time it is going to be e n t psi n t. So, it is going to be now first it is going to be uh, this is going to the first term would be partial derivative because Hamiltonian depends on x plus wave function also depends on x that is why it is going to be partial derivative equals this is going to be total derivative because energy depends on the length uh, adapted at that time t. So, it depends on time only and this psi n t remains plus I have now partial derivative e n t partial derivative of psi n t dt. So, this is the expression what we what we get. Now, if we multiply again we will use the same trick if we multiply from left hand side uh, this if we multiply then what I get is that psi m star we are multiplying from left hand side and integrating over the coordinate space we will have this psi m t then this then psi n t. So, this is one integration plus we will have psi m t h t n t partial derivative equals now this one is going to be e n t d t psi m psi n t plus e n t psi m t So, this is the expression finally we get and uh, uh, we have to note that this is the integration over coordinate space, coordinate space which means that this is nothing but 0 to some L I will consider this is the coordinate space x is varying coordinate space then psi m star t then h then psi n t 
dx that's the that's the integration so this is this integration uh, this is the meaning of this uh, dirac notation so we will uh, um, uh, go ahead and we'll be able to reduce it because h is an hermitian operator it can actually act because it's hermitian operator the property of hermitian operator we know that it can act from right hand side. So, it can actually act on this and if it is acting on this then what I get from this is that this part is nothing but E m t then psi m t psi n t dt. So, this part can be written like this. And if, 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 if this integration can be written like this way, then I can, I, can, I can replace this part here and if I replace this part here, I can replace this part here. So, what we will do is, is following, I have this one which can be written as now um, psi m t psi n t this integration as usual then I have this e m t then psi m equals this energy derivative remains to be seen. This is the uh, um, uh, total derivative. This is then psi m t psi n t plus e n t. this is going to be n partial derivative. So, what, what, we, what we get? Now, <coughs> if we consider that m not equals n, if n m not equals n, this integration will become 0, this goes 0, if m not equals n. Then I can write down this um, psi m partial derivative this is nothing but uh, this part can be written as this part can be written as um, integration of psi m t then partial derivative of the Hamiltonian this divided by E n t minus E m t one can write it down because this part and this part we are clubbed together and we are finally writing down. But this can be written only when m not equals n. So, and this is exactly what we have here this this part so we can insert it and if we insert it what we get here is that d c m t d t equals I have to write down c m t then psi m t dt minus all other summation where n not equals m that is the condition we have selected it is going to be c n t then psi m t then psi n t this integration divided by 
ई एम टी माइनस ई एम टी पार्ट सो वॉट वी हैव डन दिस एंटायर समेशन वी हैव डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट वन पार्ट फॉर एन इक्वल्स एम एनदर पार्ट फॉर एन नॉट इक्वल्स एम ओके फॉर एन नॉट इक्वल्स एम वी हैव रिटर्न दिस पार्ट एंटायर पार्ट बट but for n equals same what will happen if n equals same then this, this is going to be cm that's we have written one term will get m, n equals same and then this is going to be m but n equals m so this part is m and uh, this part will go zero because theta m minus theta m will be zero so that part will not exist anymore so finally uh, we 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 have found that the expression can be reduced to this and once we have exp, uh, reduced to this expression we will be able to do now adiabatic approximation the adiabatic approximation is following adiabatic approximation adiabatic approximation assumes that because h is changing very slowly one can write down this to be negligible or zero so this part becomes zero and if this part becomes zero i get the expansion coefficient equals minus cmt psi mt dt this is the approximate under adiabatic approximation we get this expression and once we get this expression one can now integrate this expression as follows this is going to be dcm by cm integrate it from cm 0 to cm t time equals minus 0 to t time this is going to be dt dt dash so we we have again distinguished the variable for the integration and the limit for the integration so limit is showing that i am looking at the integration from 0 to t and if i do that integration then immediately i get this value cmt at time t which is immediately after the adiabatic process is turned off this will give me the population at the mth state that will be controlled by cm0 at time t equals 0 what was the population multiplied by e to the power so this part is going to be And the ln so we have e to the power i we write down i gamma m t where gamma m is defined by i 0 to t dt dash this entire integration comes in the gamma uh, m there is another phase factor we have included so this is the solution so so what we are getting is that the expansion coefficient for each state is given by this expression it will depend on on the initial population at that state and it will depend on the another phase factor which is going to be introduced due to this adiabatic change so we can now write down all uh, everything all together this was the uh, wave function of the stationary uh, non stationary state immediately after the uh, so so it 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 started at zero time 
it ended at time t and immediately after the adiabatic process ended, I would like to know the wave function which is representing the particle, but the wave function is no longer a stationary state wave function, it is a non-stationary state wave function and a non-stationary state wave function is represented as a linear combination of all stationary state available at that time only, at this t time which is for the box LT dimension. And that depends on this particular phase factor which we have seen already and now Cn has a particular uh, value. Now for a general, the, this part is for the, for any m state. So this can be also converted to n state also any n state. So I can convert it and the moment I convert it, I will be able to plug that in and if I plug that in. I will be writing, writing down explicitly this is going to be C1, this n can vary from 1, C1 t psi 1 t e to the power i theta 1 t plus C n t psi n t e to the power i theta n t plus like this way we are adding all the terms to represent this non-stationary state of the particle and we know that each one, each expansion coefficient will be given by this. So I can write down as C1 0 e to the power i gamma 1 0 uh, gamma 1 sorry not gamma 1 0 gamma 1 t e to the power i theta 1 t that is the first term then all terms will be added then I am explicitly writing C n term also C n 0 psi n 0 uh, oh, there is a psi n here this is uh, this is psi 1 uh, t this is psi 1 t then e to the power i theta n t. So this is psi uh, C n 0 then it is e to the power i gamma 1 t sorry gamma n t and then psi n t e to the power i theta n t plus all these things all the terms will be added to represent the uh, stationary state wave function. Now if we consider the initial condition, initial condition was um, the population before t equals t less than 0, before the process started, we assume that the particle was in the nth stationary state. If the particle was nth stationary state and that means the population is going to be then 1. So, C n 0 is going to be 1, remaining all other C0 which is C10, C20 at 0 time all are going to be 0. So as I can see that these all terms will be 0 except for this term. So in the end what I get is that this psi t is nothing but psi and this is going to be 1. So it's nothing but psi n t e to the power i gamma n t and then e to the power i theta n t. That is the, that is the way it, it, it reduces. So it shows that, um, it shows that uh, if I start with nth stationary state of H0, the final finally the particle will stay under adiabatic approximation. Uh, this may not be true for uh, if I do it quickly, the expansion happens very quickly, but the expansion because the expansion happens very slowly, the particle remains in the nth state of HT, discrete nth state of HT, but it stays, it stays in the nth state that means the energy state will be defined by the by this um, uh, by this time but it the wave function accumulates two different phases and the phases the definition of this phase is this theta n is called dynamical phase and this gamma n is called geometrical geometric phase we will we will 
look at what is the meaning of this different phases in the next class.